Baldwin Way for the uh, to the amazing Hugs Foundation. We met with Laura Dennis, the fundraising manager for the charity, who kindly gave us the guided tour. Whilst there, we also learned about the equine therapy they offer. And here to talk with us more about it is Laura. Hello, Laura. Hello. How are you guys? Doing well, thank you. A few more coffees needed, I think, our side, but we are getting there. Um, you know what? I want to bring you in, if you don't mind, before we get on to the more important things. Can I just ask you about this question that we've got, the question for the nation? Do you eat a biscuit with a chocolate facing up or the chocolate facing down? You know what? I've just been thinking about this. I think I automatically eat it with the chocolate facing up, but it really yeah. doesn't matter because, as you said, you're eating it anyway. So it's got can me dunked. You, can you see the, the, the smile on her face now for it doesn't matter? She's so <laughs> happy about it. She only had that added live while we were first announcing the question on the fly. Oh, my goodness me. Anyway, anyway, we'll move on to what we're here for. Laura, thank you obviously for taking the time to talk with us this morning. Happy New Year to you and all the team at Hugs. I don't know if I can still say that on the 19th of January, but hey, <laughs> it's the first time we've seen you, obviously. You. Um, could you tell us about the equine therapy sessions? Uh, what's involved and how do they work? Yeah, so um, we call them sort of therapeutic sessions. We, we're very careful about sort of wording and stuff. Um therapy we we have like amazing amazing people here but we don't have like a qualified counselor on site as such so what we find is this is an alternative um an additional su support to those who maybe need like, the traditional talk therapies and things but they're maybe not working for them or they're a bit stuck with them and this is kind of like um something that works alongside it we work with the nhs cam service so um child and adolescent mental health services we are finding that it's working really well to help them with their sessions so it's like a, a sort of a whole um approach really for people that, that's different things that they can help them but our sessions here involve our rescue animals so it's quite nice because it's helping both animals and people we that's started really out lovely. as a horse rescue um, and then we've added this um, therapy after seeing a need in the community. We're in one of the 10% most deprived areas in England. So there's a lot of poverty here, a lot of um, sort of adverse experiences in childhood due to the deprived area. Um, and we see a lot of things like, uh, unfortunately, a lot of trauma and abuse from young people, a lot of people that are struggling with social interactions, especially after, obviously, the pandemic. Um, I think that's for everybody, really, not just young people. Um, so our sessions here start with... Uh, a course of six um, and they come for an hour each week with our amazing um, youth services manager Hazel. They are very very child focused and child led so they will come and have an, a referral sent and then an induction started to give them um, a chance to come to hugs make sure it is the right environment because obviously with things like therapy different things work for different people and certain situations aren't always right for some people so we check that they are happy and comfortable in the situation that we sort out a plan of action so what their aims and goals are for them personally uh, if there's a parent or a school involved if there's anything they want to add in so if you have a young person that's struggling at school or needs to even get back into school quite a few people here aren't even in school or education at the moment so we work a plan to try and help them go back into school gradually um, and then they will come and they'll do their six sessions with us and it can involve anything from um, animal assisted interventions which involve the behavior of the horses caring for them um, just spending time with them and then we've got other animals here as well. I mean, we've rescued over 155 horses, um, wow. but we've also got an arrangement of other animals here. So it's like a farm. We've got um, chickens and two goats, which are very popular and also very naughty. Um, we've got pigs, uh, cats, all sorts. So if you get some young people that aren't interested at all in the horses, you've got other things you can do. Um, Hazel does a bit of forestry skills with people, ecotherapy, so just generally being at, in the outdoors is obviously a huge um, thing for people. Uh, she does arts and crafts. Um, we've got like a sensory room um, and learning centre, which we call the hub, and she'll go and do things in there if the weather's particularly bad. But we're very lucky that we have a big barn in here, so we can do a lot of the horse interactions indoors if we need to. Um, it would be fantastic to get an indoor school at some point, but obviously you're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds. Yeah. So yeah <laughs> that's all absolutely incredible it sounds like, like you're really keeping on you're doing so much in, in so many different areas they're all linked together somehow a bit like chaos here actually mm, it's really yeah. good to see 
that you just go for it. You just you're helping so many people and the animals at the same time. Yeah. It's yeah, lovely, absolutely incredible. Um, so what's the science behind all of this? How does yeah. it work? So there's quite a lot of research out now. Um, I did my degree in, I did two years animal behaviour and psychology and I focused a lot on therapeutic interventions with animals and then I did a top-up degree in human behaviour. So I've read quite a lot of scientific evidence and things like that, but I mean, it all started off with Freud, really, I think. I mean, and hippotherapy, I mean, the Greeks used hippotherapy years and years ago to help people who had like um, motor neuron diseases and things. Um, We don't actually do riding here. We find a lot of the mental health work is done on the ground because that's where you build the, can really build the connection. Um, And of course, because we've got rescues, quite a lot of them aren't suitable for riding or you don't know the history. So you can't put that added risk in. Um, But yeah, Freud would use his dog. He found that young people and children that he was seeing that wouldn't open up with him would start talking to his dog. Um, And since then, there's been a huge range of benefits that have been evidenced from things like just, yeah, children generally opening up and wanting to socialise again to decreased um, sort of anxiety, depression, um, and they're able to regulate emotional behaviours, well, emotions and behaviours as well. And obviously, being in nature increases your mindfulness and things as well. But there's a lot of science behind it and a lot of investigations going on that are, pro- like, are, are proving, you're not allowed to say proving in science, but um, are evidencing that it is helping and it's it's helping them reconnect again and build relationships and confidence because the animals are non-judgmental. There's, there's no prejudgment there. They don't know those children. And what's really fascinating is when they start mirroring and re- reflecting behaviours. If you get one child that's particularly high and hyper, um, the animal will then obviously that energy will level will (laughs) lift again yeah and then you can they kind of reflect I mean I worked with one veteran who was very very hyper all the time and very in people's faces and was really struggling to build relationships after coming out of the forces and we popped him in uh, a round pen with the horse which is like a, a round just a like a round area that you can go and do things with. Um, it's quite nice because it's, it's a focused area for the horse and the person. And we just gave him a really simple task and said, get the horse to go one way around the pen, change direction around the other way. Like to any horse person, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I can do that. But if you've, you've never had an interaction with horses or you've got some mental ill health that you're, you know, you're struggling with, it's quite a big deal. So he went in and, of course, this horse just ran around, around, around the pen. He was like, what's going on? <laughs> we came out and he was like, why, why is the horse running around? I can't stop it. I can't change direction. It's just running. And we were like, have a think about what you're doing right now. And he's like, and he actually came to his own conclusion that he was high high energy yeah. and that was then reflected in the horse and it kind of then made him start thinking about his personal life and his relationships and that he was actually a, maybe a little bit too energetic in front of people and too you know in people's spaces and people were struggling with that and that's why he wasn't building that bond so mm. he actually managed to go back in that round pen and calm himself and the horse calmed and he did the task and it was brilliant but that's the kind of that kind of moment of I don't know. You know, when you get the light bulb moment. It's that kind yeah. of moment that a lot yeah. of people get with the sources. That's really, really lovely to hear. I love that. Just, <laughs> I can't, sorry, I've just got a picture of this this poor guy going in, going. Why is there a horse running around? Why is there a horse running around? Why is there a horse running around? <laughs> but this it is, works. You know, our friend's dog, the the husky mix, oh, Echo, absolutely, beautiful. who is absolutely fine yes. and calm with me. But the moment you walk in. She completely <laughs> loses true. it. She's like, you it's are true. fun. Or I only have to take one step in near this dog and it loses its marbles. And I am I do my best to look at myself and think, am I doing something? But it had the same effect. I started looking at myself going, what energy am I exuding to make you go so Whereas she'll crazy. just cuddle up with me. And She's yeah, like, I'm all good. So from a personal good? level, cool. I, I fully understand <laughs> that one uh, very, very much. Um, I think this, this has been answered really already. But what, 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 how do the animals? How are the animals feeling about all this? All obviously, obviously they benefit. They do they all seem to react positively to, to this? Do they seem to think of it all quite good? Yeah, I mean, it depends. The animals are very like us. They've all got different personalities. And with the rescues, obviously, they've, they've all sort of had different backgrounds and, and suffered different things like our young people have. And we have a team here of six ponies that are used um, for 
general things because we know that they are um, as safe as they can be. They've gone through certain training. They're residents here at Hugs, so they won't be rehomed. Um, so they will always work with the young people. But we know them inside and out. So, for instance, we've got a couple that were orphaned on the moors. Um, so we've had them since babies and we know what their temperaments are, their likes, dislikes, things like that. Um, the people that work with them are sort of experts in horse behaviour as well. So they can read if those horses are starting to get worried about if anything. Or like us, the horses have good days and bad days. So if you get a day where one pony isn't feeling it or isn't happy, then they will have another pony they can use instead. So the horse's welfare is always at the forefront as well. Um, and then we have obviously all our other rescues. So their children will then be able to work with certain rescues that they've sort of have been assessed and things. Um, we even had one rescue here that was incredibly high anxiety, doesn't like um, people at all. Um, but the, some of the children would just stand over, um, stand outside the stable door and just stand with them. And the reward for those children was the horse coming towards them and wanting, you know, taking a carrot out of the hand, which for the horse is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And for the children is a huge deal because they're then you know, contributing to that trust. horse's rehabilitation and earning trust, yeah, and building trust and seeing that they can complete a task which looks almost impossible to anybody. You know, you've got this horse that's terrified of people and then to take a carrot out of someone's hand is, is a massive deal. But wow. those horses need a lot of time spending with them, which sometimes our staff don't have that much time. So our young people get involved in that rehabilitation as well. And it's just a really lovely circle of relationships building, really. That sounds really, really long. I can imagine the first time that happened must have been such a lovely experience mm. to see or be a part of. Absolutely. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit of how hugs get their referrals and how someone might go about getting more information? Yeah, so there's loads of information on our website. Our Facebook page is full of um, stuff going on here so you can see what's happening at the charity and things. Um, Hazel, as I said, is our youth services manager. She's the lady to get in touch with. Um, you can just go onto the website and see her email address, which is youthservices at hugsfoundation.org.uk. Anybody can refer, so it doesn't have to come through a professional or a school. It can be a parent, social worker, um, carer, anybody. They can email over and we will send them a referral form and a bursary form to look at funding as well. They then complete as much as they can. So we get as much information as we can about that young person and what they're going through and how they need their help. You know, other places that they're getting help from as well. So we can maybe contact those people and try and work out a plan together. So it's more a holistic approach. Um, and then Hazel will get that in. She will have a look and see what needs there are. Um, try and write, you know, a few ideas down. Give those people an email or a call and say, you know, these are the sessions we've got available. Um, book them in. Would you like to come for an induction? Have that sort of hour here to introduce the place and come up with a plan of action with that young person and the people that come with them. And then they, yeah, and they start their six sessions. So. That's brilliant. You've got every angle covered. It's yeah. so well done for everyone involved. Um, so one last question for me, really. What's in store for this year, 2022? Is there anything that you guys are focusing on? Is there any help that you guys currently need uh, in any certain areas? We we want to expand. Um, we are so busy. Hazel is booked up till after Easter with referrals. She... Um, once, yeah, so we're looking for funding to expand to another team member for the youth team. And then obviously we can double the people that we're seeing, which would be amazing. Um, with regards to the, the rescue team, I think they're just going to carry on as they have been. They've been doing really well with every home in numbers and things through the pandemic. There's the usual things like a load of maintenance and fencing and things that need to be done. Um, we had some funding last year for some mud mats, which if anyone's horsey out there, they are amazing. Um, they're basically um, recycled plastic mats that go on the mud and stop the mud coming through. So last year we had quite a few ponies that had mud fever. We had quite a few staff that went over uh, and ended up in the mud several times. And as you can imagine, if you've got a herd of horses around you, it's not the safest thing. Um, so the mud mats have been amazing because they're creating this walkway for the animals and people to walk along and, you know, get the hay, get the water. It's a lot safer and it's a lot more pleasant for the animals as well, for their welfare. But we would love to get some more. So we're going to try and put a fundraiser out for those. Um, we're always expanding our facilities. We had some funding last year for our sensory garden and Hazel's started that with some help with some volunteers. And then come spring, we're, going to, we're putting some things like we've got uh, like a finger maze type thing for sensory needs and stuff. So that, that's going to look really cool. But it's yeah. just continually maintaining facilities and then expanding where we can 
Um, so if anyone can help with anything, um, anything, we've had somebody donate a load of hay bales to us, which was amazing for free. So, so helpful. Um, and if yeah, anyone can donate, even just five, ten pounds is just it all makes a difference. It all adds up to like thousands and it all helps. It costs the best part of 250 to 300,000 pounds to run this place every year. Um, and we're funded through sort of people like just the general public who are very, very kind and just if people can set up a monthly donation, either at five pound a month, it all builds up and it will all help become, you know, make us sustainable and keep us here for the community for years to come. I think the NHS have got, and they said, or 374,000 under 18 year olds on a waiting list at the moment for mental health help. So charities like Hugs are so, so needed to fill this gap and help these people because they're in crisis, some of them. We've, we've seen kids that are you know self-harming they've got suicide ideation those people can't wait they need seeing now um Mm -hmm. and the only way we can do that is by getting our funding to be able to carry on doing what we do so yeah if anybody can donate you know it's a huge huge thank you when we're a small charity and you really do see where your donations go and we've got a youtube channel you can have a look on that you can see testimonies from our like our I think we've got a really lovely interview that Chaos did actually with a service user and a parent. And it really tells you the difference that Hugs is making and you can really see where your money is going, mm. which is quite nice. I think for, you know, if you're donating, you want to see that change you're making, Absolutely. don't you? So. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's You're great. obviously doing absolutely incredible work and you need funds and help to actually do it and yeah. you're doing what so amazing and obviously when you, you. When any any time you're running any fundraiser or anything please get the information over to us so obviously we will do what we can to uh to get the information out there for now though i have to say thank you for taking the time to chat to us today laura it's been really nice really informative really uplifting as well um thank thanks obviously to the hugs foundation for being so welcoming thank you very much thank you thank you for having me hopefully we'll speak to you again soon yeah uh, absolutely We've got a wonderful video now uh, where we hear from Rachel, whose son Tom is a keen participant of the equine therapy sessions. Grab a brush, Tom. Yeah. He's not looking too dirty today, is he? No. It's <laughs> posing. I think Doody spotted the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Rachel. Um, I'm Tom's mum. Uh, we first found out about hugs um, when Tom had um, we'd been referred to um, Cornwall Cams. Um, and after his assessment, they felt that they couldn't help him. Um, he has a history of sort of struggling um, with that kind of environment and that kind of therapy. Um, but they did point out hugs to us. Um, it's, it wasn't anywhere we'd heard of. Um, we live quite a long way away, actually about an hour away. And it wasn't on our radar originally, but they recommended we get in touch. So I did. Um, Tom loves horses, um, has done for a long time, has riding lessons, but sometimes even struggles with that, even on a one-to-one basis. Um, So we applied here and he had his first session and absolutely loved it. Um, There's just no pressure here. It's just him, the horses, and it's made the world a difference to him. You'll have Piglet, right? We'll see if you can get get them to roll over quickest. Oh, well, that's kind of cheating. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Oh, oh. Oh, there we go. It's nice that they still enjoy Tommy scratches, yeah. isn't it? Do you think they're, they must be super comfortable to be yeah. happy enough to roll over and have their tummies tickled? Like... Funny dogs, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grass in your trotters, babe. Hey. Okay. It's quite warm as well for them today. Yeah. But I know that their um, mud wallows um, quite full, which is good. 
So the ducks were swimming in it yesterday. <laughs> Weren't you? The ducks are taking it over, aren't they? Piglet is cute. Do you want to swap pigs or are you quite happy with... I don't mind. <laughs> quite happy with Piglet. He is getting quite big, isn't he? Yeah. Will he grow more? He should grow. Right. A little bit more. And he is. Which is crazy to think because he's already <laughs> quite big, really. Yeah. Especially compared to the others. Oh. Your hand's starting to feel funny yet from his coarse fur. <laughs> A little bit. The sessions here at Hugs, um, we try and keep them as completely child-led as possible. And this helps build their confidence. They then have that real sense of achievement throughout. Um, we have animals varying in size from tiny guinea pigs or Frankie and Benny all the way up to Bubbles, our ex racehorse here. So the children can really experience everything and anything. Um, we do a lot of on the forest based activities as well. So there are so many elements which we can help these children grow. Um, animal behaviour can help them work out their own emotions and feelings as well. So lots of things go hand in hand to help with their well being whilst they're here. He's doing really well, isn't he? Because you've done a lot of long ranging with him as well, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Keeping him learning as well as you. Because yeah, you hadn't boy. done any of it, had you, when you first no. came? No. Well, you've even progressed onto the bigger ponies now, haven't you? Yeah. Who have you enjoyed long reigning the most? Pardon? Who have you enjoyed long reigning the most? Oh, I mean, Duda's very cute. Duda's, he does have that <laughs> cute factor. <laughs> even if sometimes you look a bit grumpy. <laughs> hey, he's a little ball of fluff. Week one, we drove down in complete silence. Um, Tom struggles with communication, particularly if he's stressed. Um, obviously, this was a new situation for him. He didn't know what to expect, so he was probably quite nervous coming the first time. Um, we got in the car to go home, and I couldn't shut him up all the way home in the car. He was telling me about this horse and that horse and what they've been doing, and he was just so excited. He loved every minute of it. Um, and I knew then that we'd kind of made a mini breakthrough. Um, it, you know, the effect didn't last. Um, back at home, he was still struggling a lot. Um, but week on week, I've noticed that not just while he's here, but at home, um, you know, we're able to go out more. And he's able to talk about um, how he's feeling, um, things that worry him. He's just started opening up a lot more um, over the weeks. Uh, so he had six weeks initially, um, and then the summer holidays arrived. Uh, so he had a bit of a break over the summer. Missed it a lot, I think. Um, but back again in September, and we're now um, at the end of another six weeks. So I'm not sure what the future holds, because uh, I know they have a huge waiting list, not surprisingly. Um, but hopefully, you know, we can come and volunteer once COVID allows. Um, and he can carry on spending some time here because it has made the world of difference to him. Uh, like I say, particularly with his communication skills, he's just really opened up. Personally, I think there's been massive differences in Tom. Um, when he first came, he struggled to make eye contact with us We're in, in communication, wasn't it, in talking. He was a bit worried about asking us questions and things like that. And now you're more than happy to chat away to us about your week and what's been going on. and planning your next sessions and achieving, isn't it, every week, which is brilliant. I love just seeing the, seeing the difference that we can make. I mean, it's not only us as the, as the leaders here, but also the difference that animals can make. They have such an unspoken understanding um, with all the children, no matter what they've been through. The horses just understand and they know exactly what that, what that young person needs, whether it's being a bit cheeky <laughs> or just listening and just having a calm groom. They just seem to know. It's amazing. I feel much more confident now, um, not just talking to Hazel, but just everybody in general life. I feel more comfortable with. Um, you've taken on some, uh, well, you've restarted some of your hobbies as well since yeah. you've been here, which you had kind of stepped away from, which is yeah. brilliant since coming here as well. It's such a unique environment here. 
Um, I think a lot, a lot of times now in society, children get that opportunity to have the space and the peace that is here at Hugs and with the animals as well. It just seems to be a brilliant environment to help these children and young people. I, yeah, I would recommend it 100%. Um, as I say, Tom's loved horses for a long time and, and was already riding. Um, so he's kind of used to that environment. But I would say even if your child or whoever it is, it's not just for children. Um, if they're having difficulties in other scenarios, if you've tried other kinds of therapy, other kinds of help, other avenues that haven't worked, um, hugs is just amazing. There is no agenda here. They tailor everything to the child. Um, they've just been amazing. And just being around the animals, whether it's the horses, the pigs, the various other, you know, they've got cats here, they've got chickens, all sorts. Um, and it's just such a freeing environment. And I, don't, I haven't met anybody that doesn't feel better after spending time outdoors and with the animals. It's just incredible. We really had a lovely interview there mm. uh, with Laura. It's lovely to hear from Rachel um, and about her son Tom and how things yeah. have really been uh, working for them. Fantastic stuff, guys. Please get on our social media and also their social media um, if you did catch that. Otherwise, come to us and we will point you always in the right direction for anything that's going on on mm -hmm. Chaos.